Caleb, I want to switch over to football because spring practice has started. I was able to go out to the first one. Hodge Malik Williams, what do you I know you I don't know if you've seen him or not, but he's out there taking the one reps. It was that first day was really windy. What do you think about UNLV getting that new quarterback in? I, I think honestly, this is I, and I thought this when he got when he committed and when he signed and uh, as well as Fluka, their, their style of play, um, I think unlocked a whole new element to the offense. And this, I don't want to knock Jay Maiava, but I don't think he was capable of bringing the type of athleticism at quarterback um, that I think at times the go-go system requires. I think uh, when you talk about having to defend all 11, when Williams tucks the ball, you can see the athleticism, the different gear that he has as an athlete. Um, not to mention his arm talent. He can throw the ball. And you mentioned the first day of practice. It's been windy for, you know, the, the start of spring ball. So you probably haven't seen the true potential of letting it loose downfield. But the athleticism is something I think that will be an element that is, is going to be electrifying, to say the least. From either he, if he gets the starts right now, he's taking the bulk of the reps. Um, but it may be a different story when fall comes. There may be more of a competitive atmosphere in the fall this year. Um, but I think for right now, you already kind of get hints at what kind of offense the go-go can be with an athletic quarterback like Williams or like Scooter when, when things kick off in the fall. So I'm excited about that. And I was from the jump when he, when he signed, um, you, it, it's hard to defend against athletic quarterbacks. And, you know, he's been on the short end of that stick for a lot of its history defensively. So um, they, they'll understand what it feels like to be on the winning side of that. I think this, this fall. Caleb Herring is with us, the, uh, one of the voices of Rebel football. Of course, a former Rebel quarterback. Spring practice has begun. There's another one tomorrow. I think that's number five in the spring. And I'll tell you, to build on Hodgman League Williams, uh, one absolutely has a good arm. Uh, Two-minute drill yesterday, uh, they tried to take a deep shot, and he, he tossed it 55 yards in the air. The connect wasn't there, but he's got a freaking cannon. I got to tell you, this is the first time – in the last six or seven years being around UNLV football, where they have so many people back on offense where you look around and you're like, ooh, that weapon, that weapon, that weapon, that weapon. And you start to think about the weapons, and they're going to look a little different at running back, but Jaden Thomas comes back with uh, double-digit touchdowns. Ricky White had almost 1,500 yards in the air receiving. De Jesus was a dual threat. The, the guy freaking played running back at 155 pounds in the, in the bowl game. And I'll tell you the other guy, who I thought was tearing it up in practice. And this is something you have always said, man, it's a weapon that UNLV, if they really could, had one, they'd be dynamite. I'm telling you, Kaleo Ballon guy and his hands and the, the freaking catches he's making in practice, sick. He has been one of my, like, like green lights when he's available. Like, he dealt with injuries early in his career, you know, he obviously, I think, honestly, he was just underutilized in the past when he was healthy. Um, and it's amazing to me what confidence can do in the sports world. Like, yep. I think Kaleo got exposed a lot. He got touches. Um, he was trusted in a lot of big third down spots by Jay Maiava. They had a, a definite connection. But once he started to catch some in game passes, it's like the potential was unlocked. And he had an epiphany within himself like, I could do this. I'm, I'm a stud out here. Um, and he turned into that. The finish of last year into this year, preparing with confidence, looking the part. He looks like an NFL tight end. Um, he got to put some of his, his, his athleticism on display um, because he caught some passes, had an almost 80-plus yard touchdown in Air Force. He got walked down. We won't judge him for that. Um, but um, he's been fantastic. And then on top of that, he's a blocker. He blocks like a sixth offensive lineman, um, which has Coach Odom and the offense fired up about what he can do. I expect that he gets more attention in the offense and he's more integral part. Obviously, teams will probably game plan more for him, but that's what you want. You want your tight end to become a matchup problem. Uh, and that's especially as a quarterback in the passing game, which you want. You want a tight end that can get you five, six yards through the air on an easy mismatch type of play. I think Kaleo has the ability to be that. And, I mean, I'm not going to put my projections out there, but look out for, like, all Mount West type of performances if he has another year like he did last year. That that dude's a stud. He looks apart, and he's got some really soft hands, great attitude, great kid off the field. So, I mean, he's one that you root for if you're a you know, fan. Follow the Kaleo story, for real. So the way the season was graded at the end and uh, after the season last year, because they got to nine wins and they made a bowl game, I think a lot of people were like, you know what, that was pretty damn good. There wasn't a lot of harsh criticism. The vibe I get going to spring practice and then hearing coaches talk is that was not good enough at all, and we have to be a lot better. Yeah. And Michael Shear, the D.C., was in front of us the other day, talked to the media, and he pointed out, you know, there's three areas that you, you grade a team in. One of them is turnovers forced, and they were great. 
at that. He mentioned another area. He said stopping explosive plays in the deep shots, not acceptable. We were not good. So I asked him on Tuesday, uh, you know, to build on that and what was not acceptable and, and why those deep shots happened. Fire this. In my opinion, we started playing by ourselves. You know, we didn't talk to each other, didn't communicate. Uh, everybody's out there kind of on their own. It doesn't work out too good. You know, you'll see some guys make plays because they're out there on their own making plays, but then there's going to be times when you see a guy running wide open down the sideline like the second touchdown of the KU game because nobody wants to talk to each other. Nobody's communicating. We're all just out there alone. It makes the game a lot harder. All right. Now, upon reflection, and with how many deep shots they gave up against Kansas, and Boise had a bunch, and it was a problem early in the season, you can see the reshuffling of the cornerback room. They mean business. They're, they're not going to tolerate what they saw last year. It harkens back, listening to Shira talk there, it's consistency first with coaching, because I remember back last spring uh, in one of his interviews, and maybe it was in the fall um, during camp, where he said the good defenses you don't have to look at. You can hear it. You can hear good defenses with communication out on the field. Um, so that's a consistent message. He wants communication. And obviously, with some of the explosive plays that were given up down the stretch, there was coverage bust, and you can't have that in the secondary. So I think that's kind of what he's alluding to there. <laughs> Excuse me. Obviously, explosive plays is going to be big on both sides of the ball. UNLV gave up a lot. And it seemed like for a stretch, they kind of tightened it up uh, and during the mid-portion of the season when they got hot and went on a little bit of a run um, and blew some teams out, really ran away with some things. But I think they're – they may have gotten um, a little complacent defensively, and that's when you start to play on your own, like Coach is talking about there. You look start looking for your own individual success and maybe gambling a little bit. Even as the coverage expands and things start to advance and you make little subtle changes, your confidence in the game plan and the structure maybe fades a little bit, so you lean to playing on your own a little bit more. So maybe that's a little bit of the case there in the secondary especially. But I think as a team on defense, you have to play connected. They're the best team defensively, um, we're all connected on a string. If one guy blitzes and I knew that blitz was coming, um, I could account for that. But what I was always trying to exploit was that next guy that's supposed to rotate. As a quarterback, as a point guard, as a passer, you're talking about basketball and offensive similarities. If that zone doesn't rotate right, there's a, there's a, uh, there's a vulnerability right behind the blitz. That, that's usually the best place to attack a defense. Well, same thing with coverage rotations. If the coverage rotates, I can find where that, that string is supposed to connect to the next player. And if I can exploit that constantly enough, then you get big plays. I think we saw that with UNLV defensively. The strings weren't always connected. Um, and that lack of connectedness, whether it was guys looking out for their own interest, guys playing by themselves, like Coach said, or just complete miscommunications, not getting the calls across to each other, those kinds of things lead to devastation for defenses. And it's one of those things that won't be tolerated, and you see that with some of the roster adjustments, the guys that have come in and the guys that are um, especially familiar with what that structure is supposed to look like and how that string is supposed to work. Um, I, I look to see the explosive plays be a point of emphasis all offseason long uh, so that it's not a problem come the fall. Caleb, great spot. We're up against it, man. We appreciate it. All right, guys. Take care. Have a good one. Uh, check for more of the Michael Shear conversation with the media. We'll be posting that up at Steve Cofield on Twitter, at UNLV All Access on Twitter as well, and including him talking about a lot of the newcomers in that defensive backfield.